Welcome back to the channel everybody. I am Florida Boy. This is my EDC channel. Today's video is going to be kind of a fun one. We're going to have a little bit of a showdown today. So, we've got the Echo and the Pyrite. Let's get into it. Now, I'm not going to say that you might be living under a rock if you haven't heard of either one of these two knives yet, but these are kind of like the top two budget knives right now that everybody's talking about, and uh, for, for good reason. They're both really, really good knives. Um, so I've done a little bit of a, well, I guess I haven't done reviews on these yet. I'm still kind of carrying them and seeing which one I like the best, but I have done unboxings of these. And uh, you, you'll see I did a lot of comparisons and whatnot, so we won't do a ton of that on this episode. But if we put them side by side, we can see they're both pretty dang close in size. Um, pretty close blade shape. Um, I, I mean, they're, other than color and stuff, they're pretty, they're pretty similar. Um, there are some slight differences on the Echo. We have a front flipper. Um, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. So... Uh, let's just do some size, comp just a couple. I'm only going to do like two just because, um, we'll just throw in a PM2 right here. So you can see kind of the size of that. And then, um, we'll also do a rat model one here at the top and that'll give you a good size of the knives. The knives are very, very, very close in size, uh, to like say the rat model one PM2 kind of takes the cake a little bit. Uh, but the PM2 is a big knife. So that's, that's about all I'm going to do for size comparisons, unless anybody's going to want to see one more. I'll just throw the MSI up there because it's currently sitting right directly in front of me. <laughs> Easy access. So, all right. Now that we've done that, if you want to see the actual, we'll, we'll do the pyrite, the pyrite here. Um, so the pyrite is almost seven and a half. If we do tip, are we at the very tip? We are um, just over seven and a quarter, almost seven and a half. I'm not great at the whole, at measurements, like eighth inches and stuff. So, <laughs> so um, oh, let's see here. So how about weight? There we go. So let's see what we're looking at in terms of weight. Let's see how, how different they are. I'm going to go ahead and close this. 3.7 for the pyrite and for the echo we are at 3.7 so <laughs> that's what i'm saying these things are very very similar they're very different but very very similar okay so next let's do um where's that ah there we go all right so next let's do carry profile so here is your pyrite. I got mine canted a little bit somehow. Oh well. So there's the pyrite. And we can see here you have an ultra deep carry pocket clip. This forewarning, a little bit of foreshadowing here is the exact same thing. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I'm saying, man. These it's a hard it's it's a hard choice, but I know which way I'm leaning. Um where is, I thought I tore off, uh, I guess I did not, oh well. Um, so let's, we'll do just a little bit of a cut test. Just barely even a cut test, but just to show sliciness. Uh, we'll start off with the Echo. So the Echo, caught my finger on that one on accident. Um, the Echo comes in at like 60 bucks, I think directly from um, CJRB's website, I think it's like $57. It's relatively inexpensive and super, super duper slicey. Um, cuts paper like a dream. Like that a lot. And then the Pyrite, get that out of the way. There we go. Move him out of the way for a second. And then the Pyrite. Just a slicing. 
So, yeah, <laughs> these knives, man. These two, these two are. It, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. All right, so let's open him, put him at the end, and then we'll look here at the echo for a second. So here is your echo. Mine is the carbon fiber variant. That's the one my wife picked out. And uh, like I said, about 57 bucks. Um, this one comes in a couple of different finishes. This you can get in a stonewashed steel. You can get in black PVD, like this, the carbon fiber. Or it also does come in a green micarta. There we go. Turn it around to this side a little bit. And then we'll look at the blade. So you can see there, this is a Ray Laconico design. And the blade steel is AARPM9, which is, I mean, depending on who you ask, it's a, it's a fancy D2. Um, I, I have never had a problem with RPM9. Uh, I live in Florida, obviously. <laughs> And uh, living in Florida, I tend to uh, have a little bit more humidity than some other places. So I have to kind of watch myself with some steels. And I've never had um, ARRPM9 ever rust on me or anything like that. So we got our stonewash blade. Here you go. And CGRB stonewashing is actually pretty good. It's, uh, it's, it's really not bad. Let me get that focus. There we go. We don't have a lot of billboarding going here on the on the actual blade itself. We almost got like a swedgy thing going on here. Um, I think it's just an aesthetic design, but uh, it could be for just a hair as far like a hair weight savings maybe. Uh, we've got our button lock. This thing is running on ceramic ball bearings. Let's see if we can see up in there. There we go. I am a pretty big fan of the Echo. We see on the back, um, I've got my got my giant flashlight here. Uh, let me, let me. Oh, here's what we'll do. We'll open this, see if we can get a better look. Uh, you can see your liners. You do not have any milling, so they didn't do any weight savings there. Um, we do have a couple standoffs here on the back. You've got your lanyard hole here on this middle standoff which is a very nice place to put it. If we look at the echo, we have the hole go over that. Um, so, you know, some people still carry lanyards, some don't. My PM2 has a lanyard. Um, it helps to index it a little bit whenever I pull it out of my pocket. But aside from that, I, I could live without a lanyard. I don't have to have one. I'm not, you know, but lanyards are another aesthetic thing. They look good on knives, on some knives, not every knife. Flip her around. There is the back side of the the knife. <laughs> oh man, I, I got some good sleep last night, and uh, now I'm I'm having a hard time waking up. Um, so let's talk about the action of the Echo. So action on the Echo is excellent. Um, very very drop shutty. If I here we go, we'll just break the detent. There we go. So if I let go of her, she just falls. Um, Reverse flick, no problem at all. Uh, my hands are kind of kind of sweaty. These lights get hot. Let me see if I can wipe my hands off for a second. Um, you can you can pretty much deploy this every way, side of the thumb. Uh, so my only my only complaint with the with the echo so far is kind of the front front flipper tab. So that front flipper will catch you. So whenever you open this knife. And it, you know, if you're doing a reverse flick and it comes around, it can catch the side of your thumb right here or the side of your finger. And that can stop it from flicking. So you got to be a little bit conscientious, like either hold your finger back or kind of go a little bit lower on the knife. Um, same thing whenever you're, whenever you're flipping it back down. If you're here pressing the button, which is kind of an organic place to put your hands, that front flipper tab will come up and it will rub the back of your finger. Um, not a complaint. I'm just... Stating some stating that so you know if you're looking, um, but the action on the Echo is phenomenal, phenomenal. It it is just such <laughs> such a fidget knife. Um, so let's let's set this down for a second, and we will talk a little bit about the Pyrite. So let's look at him. So the pyrite, my wife picked out the black one. These were these were birthday gifts for me. 
or from my wife, <laughs> from me to me. Um, I, I keep a little book where I write down all the stuff in that I need to pick up. And uh, she asked if she could look through it to figure out what she wanted to buy me for my birthday. And these were what I ended up with. And uh, she did a good job. I'm glad she picked the black and the carbon fiber because I wouldn't have picked those for myself. And uh, I actually kind of like them. So the all black look is actually kind of killer. So the pyrite. This is $60. And that's straight from the Artesian Cutlery website. Or, you know, they're on Amazon and all that good stuff. So, um, if we are talking about this knife, blade length, we are 3.1 inches. And this is a black PVD coating. Oh, let's see if I can get that. And, uh, yeah, so we've got the Warncliffe reverse Tanto style blade. We are also running on ceramic bearings. Let's see me press this button lock. There you go. See how that plunger works. And, uh, yeah, so first off, being that we're talking about the blade here, I'll hold this one just for comparison, but we can see how different this choil is, this plunge grind, sharpening choil, whatever you want to call it. So you can actually choke up a little bit on the pyrite. Um, not going to happen. This is more of just a sharpening choil here. Uh, the, the echo's got more of a sheep's footy blade to me. Um, so that's, that's just a little bit of a sharpening choil, but on here, you do have a little bit of a finger choil. You can kind of fit your finger in there. Just got to be a little careful. Um, but it also gives you plenty of place to sharpen or plenty of room to sharpen. So, um, both of these knives did excellent on that. Both of the, both of the designs are great. Uh, now the action for the pyrite. So there's my pyrite's action. Pyrite has a stiff detent. The Echo is fall shut. See, I wasn't holding the button there, just in case you thought I was. So yeah, the Echo the echo has better action to me. Um, just general action. Now, the Echo, or the Pyrite, is a snappier reverse flicker because you've got more tension on that detent. And trust me, I have cleaned this. I have oiled this. I have fidgeted the hell out of this knife <laughs> so so i promise it's not just still breaking in it's uh that's that's the action of mine so aside from doing any kind of tuning which i have not done i've left it the way it was out of the box and now the action isn't bad the action's actually good um i'm just saying that i prefer the action over the echo so let's keep going back here again so if we take our little flashlight chion and shine, you can see we do have some very nice milled liners on the inside. Um, we got some triangular patterns. Uh, there you go. Triangular patterns that are cut out. Uh, nice skeletonization on there. A little bit of weight savings. So going back to the back, here's our standoffs. And there's your lanyard hole. So yes, it does have a lanyard hole. Yep, has a lanyard hole. <laughs> A lot of people hate seeing that. So that's that's another thing I like about the Echo. Um, so here here's my two cents on that. And uh, this is going to be a really, really, really weird opinion. But uh, it's my opinion. And you're here watching my opinions. <laughs> that's, that's why you're here. So um, I prefer both as far as the lanyard holes go. I like the lanyard hole on the scales. And I like the lanyard hole here. Now, two different situations. I prefer the lanyard hole on the scale if I am going to run a lanyard. So, like in the case of my PM2, I was I knew I wanted a lanyard on here. And I do want a lanyard on my PM2. And uh, I like that the lanyard hole is on the scale. Now, if it's a knife... <laughs> yeah, I know this is super weird, but... If it's a knife that I'm not going to want to put a lanyard on, yes, I do prefer it back here. That's probably the same thing with everybody. Um, there's just certain knives, you know. There's knives that you look at it and you go, that would look goofy with a lanyard. And those are the knives where the lanyard hole should be hidden. Because everybody knows. You can look at it and you can go, yeah, that shouldn't have a lanyard. Um, and that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of how I feel about that. This lanyard hole on this guy does not look bad. And actually, I think it was probably a good idea because cutting out that little chunk of steel probably did give it a little bit more weight savings. And uh, definitely, definitely not a bad idea. 
But um, as far as the knife itself goes, the jimping, go back to the blade for a second since we went ahead and rounded around. The jimping on these is roughly the same. Uh, the only thing about the Echo is the jimping is recessed. There you go. Uh, back between the liners. You can see it. There we go. You can see it protruding over the top, so it's not it's not recessed. Thank God. It's just sandwiched in between the liners. I, d I have some knives where the jimping is sandwiched and recessed, and you get to a point where you're like, why'd you even put it there? Echoes. <clears throat> oh, my voice is cracking. The Echoes jimping does come out here outside the liners feels good um let's look at the blade again real quick we both have the same angles same flipper hole um i said they're they're super similar but they're very different uh if we look at the back here the the shape is just a little different we do have that little finger groove but then we have straight the the scales just go straight with the liners on the pyrite it's got a little bit of a curve to it so a little concave um uh, that's that's going to be a preference thing. I I don't really notice a huge huge difference. Um, I will say that the Echo feels chunkier in the hand, but it's probably just because we have a fatter. Yeah, see so you can see how the actual uh, scale itself, the handle is fatter on this guy, and we kind of push out in the back a little bit. Um, uh, it, it is a hard choice if you don't have both of these. This would be an insanely hard choice. Which is why I picked, well, you know, which is why I wrote both down. That's why I, I picked both of these. Um, so, yeah, the hardware is the same. The pocket clip's the same. That's why we're not really talking about that. We're just talking about all the extra stuff. Oh, uh, man. I think so far I'm leaning towards the Echo. Just so far. Now, I really, really do enjoy the Pyrite. Um, the Echo's just got all these other terms like all these other ways of deployment and my hands are slippery again i don't know if you've ever been under studio lighting <laughs> but uh yeah it makes it makes your hands like super sweaty which is so gross um and i only say gross because i'm recording currently i don't mind sweaty hands but whenever you're recording and the only thing of you on the screen is your hands you don't want them to be sweaty there we go i had to wipe off my hands <laughs> so um yeah the the echo is a fidget beast um every every term of deployment is super super smooth super liquid uh this thing is literally awesome uh you can definitely deploy with the flipper with the button lock that's easy too you can do most of the same things with the pyrite uh i still have a hard time doing the thumb flick mine sometimes it's it's doing it today um the detent's just a lot stronger it's a lot it's a lot harder on my pyrite and now yours may, yours may be different mileage mileage may vary but uh that's that's the way mine is it's definitely broken since i pulled it out of the box but um the action is still pretty stiff and we'll see here there we go we'll do the drop test there you go and I have to give it a little bit of risk to get it to drop, just a little, if we do the the Echo. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. The Echo also makes more of a ting here. I don't know if my mic will pick this up. Let's see. So here's the Echo. Oops. All right, so there's your Echo. You're tinging. Hopefully that can, hopefully my mic can illustrate that. And then we'll do the pyrite. Action stuck, my fault. There you go. So that should be pretty easy to hear the difference. Uh, the echo definitely has more of a metallic ting. And I think it's awesome. It kind of, it kind of gives you like old movie, like old school movie switchblade vibes where they're like, ting. that's, that's kind of what I, what I get every time I flip that, that echo. Uh, they're both very close. Very, very close. Um, I think I'm going to do a couple little upgrades on these. If you didn't know on Artesian Cutlery's website, they sell a titanium pocket clip for these for like 20 bucks, a titanium milled pocket clip. 
And I think that would be a cool little upgrade for these, especially on this all black knife, just to have a little titanium pocket clip, I think would look really good. So uh, they're like $18 plus shipping. Um, so I think I'm going to pick that up just, just because I like both these knives a lot. And like I said, my wife bought them for me, so why not do a little bit of upgrading on them? So that's going to kind of do it for the comparisons. This was kind of just like a showdown. Let's see the differences between the two. Um, so far I'm leaning towards the echo. It's still not, still not a done deal yet. I'm still kind of carrying them. My rotation right now is pretty big. I've been, I've been slimming it down, getting through my reviews and my knives, but, um, they're still, they're still in rotation. So once they come out of rotation, they'll get full reviews. And, uh, this, this could probably kind of count as a full review. But we're, we're, we'll give them their own dedicated videos. They deserve, they deserve that. They're both excellent knives. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. I post every day. It might be slowing down. It might be slowing down. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm finding time to record when I can. I don't have quite as much time anymore. But the videos are going to keep on rolling. They're going to keep on going. Um, I may just have some days here and there where I don't post every day. But as of right now, not the case. So we'll see. If, if it happens, don't, don't be mad at me. There's just a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. So um, thank you guys again. Consider subscribing. I greatly, greatly appreciate you. I'll catch you on the next one.